Well, it's hard to believe the 2024 race season for the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Models is roughly two months away before we kick off the 2024 campaign. The schedule has been released, and we're joined by series director Steve Francis here on the guest line to break down what is our 2024 schedule. And Steve, there's a couple of things that people uh, are, are assured for. We know what's in store. And the first thing is that, of course, we're going to kick off the 2024 campaign at Volusia Speedway Park for Sunshine Nationals. Yeah, we uh, we did change the purse structure a little bit. You know, we had the 8,000, 8, 8,000, 20,000 last year and then rained out Saturday of all things. So we didn't get the 20. So we adjusted that, went 10, 12, 15 this year. That way, if we would have any weather, um, at least the race teams got to run for sufficient purses. And of course, doubling down, taking a couple weeks, you know, off. Most teams still staying down in Daytona area. But then, of course, heading back over to Volusia Speedway Park for Dirt Car Nationals. It's so funny because we're just talking about the late model portion of things. But for many of us, you know, this is a two week excursion down in Volusia for Dirt Car Nationals. But really ending those two weeks is the late models once again. Yeah. And, you know, we, we kept the purse structure the same for that. I think that's a 10, 12, 20. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it, it it makes it sufficient for teams to stay down and and to have large purses to to race for. You know that's what uh what a lot of the team owners and things have asked for this year is more of an increase through the middle. And um you know we built a lot of those purses last year that we're we generally run anywhere from two to ten thousand dollars more than than a lot of our 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 competitors so to speak um, in in our standard fixed purses that are all on the internet. And of course, you know, we're going to do a little jumping around here because first and foremost, I get excited looking at this schedule. There's some new race tracks that, you know, I have never been to with the couple years I've been with the series, a couple people maybe that have been on tour with us that haven't been to. Uh, but we need to stay somewhere warm at the beginning part of the season. And of course, that usually takes us down south. So leaving Volusia Speedway Park in the later part of March, we visit a relatively new track to the schedule, that being Thunder Hill Raceway. Yeah, um, Jason and the guys over there had called, uh, they actually called in 23 asking for a date and we didn't have anything, you know, we were kind of set in everything then. And, uh, you know, with, with 411 going away, um, we hate to hear that, but with 411 going away and, and uh, you know, Boyd's going away, that kind of opened some some gaps up there in that Tennessee area. So we're going to go there, uh, you know, late March um, to run there for a two-day show, um, about an hour and a half south of Nashville. Gives teams a, another good place to go have a good time, hang out in Nashville maybe a day and, and, and then go uh, – Go on down and run those races. Um, if you look at the schedule this year, we didn't schedule near as heavy in March as we did last year. We lost them all. I mean, we lost every one of them. So, uh, you know, we figured we'd uh, help increase our odds this year and, and, and give teams a little more time to recuperate after Florida. Perfect. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put my travel day in for that two days ahead of race schedule. So that way we can all, you know, uh, hit up Nashville. But of course, Farmer City back on the schedule for the Illini uh, leading into early April. And then we make our return back down to Talladega where, I mean, what a great environment it was last year. Absolutely packed grandstands. We had a little attrition with some weather, but it was so cool to see, you know, the NASCAR people come over and watch dirt racing. The dirt people get the chance to go over and watch NASCAR and back on the schedule this year for 24. Yeah, really, really glad David Miller and Adam Stewart, you know, and everything they did this year, last year, you know, we had, I don't know, 63 or 68 cars, something like that. One of one of our larger car counts of the year at Talladega. And, uh, you know, on NASCAR weekend, it, it has a, uh, the atmosphere is just kind of electric around everything going on in Talladega and, and having that race there at that time. Um, we have, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, Owners and drivers have asked for some different purse structures, maybe not so much top heavy stuff. So uh, David and Adam were one of the first ones to kind of sign up and they went with a, uh, we're going to go with a 35,000 to win there. Um, we took $15,000 off first place and added 10,000 more. So $25,000 more goes from third back in that field. So it's a, it's now a 5,000 for 10th, 3,000 to start. I think it's 9,000 for fifth. Um, so, you know, we tried to do what we listened to the owners and, and the, the drivers and, the, and, you know, the, the group of people that are paying the bills and tried to, uh, tried to, tried to accommodate what they were asking for as much as we possibly could. Um, so that being said, I don't want to steal your next moment, but, you know, then we're going to play into Mississippi Thunder a couple weeks after that went right into the same, uh, Mississippi Thunder was actually, uh, one of the first ones to, to agree to this and, you know, to kind of just start working on this stuff, you know, Bob Timms, he, uh, 
his son races, so he's a car owner. He's a racetrack owner. He's a race fan. So he sees every side of it too. And he says, man, I, I know this is where we need to go. I just, you know, we're doing what they asked. Now they got to come and support us and show us that this is what they truly wanted. And of course, a couple of races as we head, you know, to Oklahoma, Kansas in that area. Then you'd mentioned it, Mississippi Thunder for the Dairyland Showdown. That race weekend has quickly become uh, one of my favorite race weekends just with the environment, the camping, the three-day shows. Uh, that, that area has grown on me as well. And then we head to an Ohio, Pennsylvania swing. Before we come back down south for a racetrack that I have been fortunate to turn some laps at, uh, but back on the World of Outlaw schedule. It's been a while since we've seen it. Most people around here notice Friendship, but it has been renamed as Ultimate Motorsports Park, and, and that's back on the schedule as well, part of this uh, pay structure. Yeah, yeah, Ultimate, Bobby Kohler and the group over there have been just absolutely excellent to work with. They kind of said, okay, here's your blank piece of paper. Build us a, build us a purse structure. So, um, you know, he was he was very open to it's kind of like whatever you want to do, we're going to do it and try to make it happen. Um, I think he's already spent over a million dollars on the facility, just upgrades. So people that haven't been there in a while don't expect the same facility that you drove into 10 years ago or even three years ago, probably. Um, Bobby's done a lot with it. Um, he does everything first class. And we're, we're really excited to try to kind of build this event and, um, you know, kind of make more destination events in the schedule. Um, you know, you, we're going to, like you kind of jumped over that Kansas uh, swing there and, you know, going to going to Arrowhead, a, a beautiful facility that they spent about $3 million on just revamping the place. And then from there, going to Mississippi Thunder for the big purse, then, you know, going to Pennsylvania, then back to, um, back to Ultimate, you know, just kind of is a, a really, really nice spring. Uh, and what we, what we really wanted to kind of concentrate on, we wanted to, give race teams time to go out and race. you know, you go out, you race really hard, you come off, you have a weekend or two off, you have a chance to have a life, you know, you have a chance if you so choose, there's other races, we know that out there in the schedule. But if you want to spend a weekend at the lake with a family or something like that, there's time built in this schedule to do that. And after we leave, of course, Ultimate, we kind of do a, a loop up into the Midwest, going to Ponderosa and Kentucky, Brownstown, Independence Motor Speedway in Iowa, of course, that being a new addition to the schedule. And then we head up over towards Minnesota, North Dakota for the I-94 River Cities and then a new addition, Norman County Raceway. That one's a new one for us as well. Yeah, and, you know, it's uh, that's one of them that the the whole community got behind. And I've got, you know, things from the Chamber of Commerce and the the mayors and everything else, man, thank you guys for coming, whatever you need, whatever we need to do. And those are, those are events that always seem to be very successful when the whole community gets behind it. You know, this is, uh, I think this racetrack's like 120 years old and this is like the biggest thing that's ever happened there. So, uh, um, you know, Donnie shots, I called Donnie. I said, what about this place? And Donnie said, man, my, my niece is run there. Some, he said, I think you'll be fine there. Um, you know, they're going to put a lot of, a lot of temporary grandstands in there. I think about 3000 temporary grandstands in there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, a major effort, you know, to, to do this, but I really like working with promoters that aren't scared to, to take a chance. Um, I was always that way my whole career. I wasn't ever scared to take a chance and, uh, sometimes it worked great. Sometimes it didn't, but places that you can get that are willing to, go out on a limb and do something different, look at something different, look at different ways of doing it. Ones that have great community support, Fairbury, the greatest community support of any racetrack in the country, bar none. But I think racetracks have seen that and now the communities have seen that and you're starting to see a little bit more of that. And those are the places that we really have been involved with. And another exciting addition to the schedule this season, of course, we had the opportunity to return to Deer Creek last season for a one day show, but it has now been announced, you know, that we're going back there for the Gopher 50, now part of the World of Outlaw Late Model schedule. You know, the Gopher is a, an event that I've been a part of as a racer for a lot of years and uh, really respect, you know, the Sorensen Queensland group up there that that is running that racetrack now. They've uh, they've helped me with a lot of things. We've talked about a lot of things and it's really an honor to get to go back and do the gopher again and and to bring it back to the world of outlaws. You know, it uh, it was a world of outlaws event for many, many years and it's just really great to have it back in our family. Of course, Deer Creek, a, a phenomenal place that brought great car count. And the joke was when we all left there, I think in that area when you're born, you're gifted a B mod. Everyone had B mods. There was great car counts, tons of fan. So to be able to go back there for, you know, a prestigious event, it, it's going to be great to have them on the schedule. 
Well, they build a they build a really neat atmosphere there. Um, that whole northeast or northwest area really builds great atmospheres with their events, and uh, you know, from the campground across the across the parking lot there to uh, you know to everything they have going on there is just uh, just an impressive place. I mean, I think that's a great segue right into that middle portion of the schedule. We head over to Sharon for a two day show, and then it's. PDC season, you know, we go over to Prairie, uh, Prairie Dirt Classic for Fairbury for the two-day show. Um, but in between that and Cedar Lake, which we're usually used to a one-day show somewhere in the midst of that, uh, we've got Wilmot Raceway before we head over to USA at Nationals at Cedar Lake. That, again, uh, that two-week portion right there has really just grown on me. It's some of my favorite portion of the summer, heading into mid-August. And then we go on a swing of three new racetracks for us here, Highland Speedway, which... You know, I think we can honestly say, Steve, you literally answered a prayer by putting Highland uh, here on the schedule. Um, yeah, they kind of put us on the spot in that one. Uh, um, I think Rusty Griffwell did that prayer there, and uh, he kind of put us on the spot, and we asked a couple of things of them, you know, so a little bit more grandstands, a few things like that, and they responded they would have it all done. And, um, you know, after talking with Sam Driggers and, and some of the UMP guys that have raced there, um, we're going to go to Highland. You know, that's a, a that's a big thing for us and for Highland. Um, something different, but that really is a unique little swing. You know, you go Highland, you go to Spoon River. Uh, everybody talks about how great Spoon River races and and all that. So, you know, they're going to have a World Outlaws race at Spoon River. Then we're going to go to Maquoketa, which um, Ricky Kai and Jeff Hoker are, are you know kind of helping with that that event quite a bit. Uh, Ricky's going to do all the track work, all the track prep. Um, and really looking on to continue that success of some of the event we built, you know, there before and just moving it to Makoka now. It's it's another one of them places that, you know, the whole fair board has gotten behind and just completely support, man, what do you need? What can we do? What do we, you know, and, and Jeff Hoker planning, you know, his Toys for Tots things, his car shows, his truck shows around the event. So uh, going to be a really, really big event there. Cut back to and two that- days from the three, but a big event there. Yeah, and that area, of course, always, uh, you know, so welcoming to race fans, race teams, and we get that, that Iowa influence for some of the teams, you know, that are, that are based around that area, like a Ryan Gustin. So, uh, Atomic, we'd mention it, we go right there from Iowa, and then we come back down south. We've got, of course, Sonoa and Rome back on the schedule for a two day show, and then, uh, we head to two new racetracks. Again, I'm excited to add these ones because it'll be the first time I've ever been to a race in Louisiana being Boot Hill, and then, of course, Rocket Raceway Park in Texas. You know, it's been a while since we've seen the Outlaws kind of head that direction. It has been, but, you know, those are with, again, this kind of plays into a little bit of the UMP group and working with them and Comp Cams, which is a, a part of the, the Dirt Car team. Um, you know, they're, they're starting to ask us to come to that area, and, and that area is growing in the late model ranks again. Um, you know, probably six years ago, you could have went down there, and there wasn't a tremendous amount of late models in that area at the time, but that area has really, really grown uh, in late models again. So, uh, and Boot, you know, uh, Boot Hill, uh, I've been down there with Comp Cams a few years for their opening show and, and helped them the last couple of years with it, and... I really like the facility. I kind of like what was going on. It's a little bit old school, a little bit new school, but draws a great crowd, has great support. Um, Rocket, again, another one of the newer racetracks that has had a ton of money spent on it, making it, a, I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful facility. Um, so, you know, I've watched some I've watched some races there, and, and it seems to race really well. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm happy to kind of expand our footprint without making our travel get out of, out of bounds with what we're doing. You know, we, we did everything we could to not have to travel back and forth, back and forth, but there is a little bit of that in the world. You know, the, the, the schedules, everybody's schedules in the late model world or, or any, any dirt racing world right now is, is crowded. And so we did our best to try to make, be able to have race teams go out, race a tremendous amount while they were out and then be able, be able to come home and regroup or stay out and race if they so choose. And of course, once we leave there, it's just as fast as it started. It will end once again at the dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway for four days at, uh, you know, world finals, same format, qualifying being there on that Wednesday and then three days of racing action. So we've, we've gone through the schedule. There's plenty new there. There's plenty of excitement going into 2024, but there's more beyond this schedule that teams and drivers have to look forward to. That's an expansion here in 24. Well, last year in winter circle money and 
points money. We paid a million one hundred and sixty thousand, I believe it was. Um, this year in winter circle money and points money, that's a million three hundred and fifteen. And that's guaranteed money. That's not, you know, well, if we get there and, you know, if we don't, if we rain out a month, it doesn't go. That is guaranteed money. If we rain the schedule out, the race teams are all getting 10 checks, $3,000 a month, $30,000 in winter circle money. Um, points fund is now 175, 125, 110, 180, 60. So those numbers went way up. And we're, last year we went in guaranteeing 12. This year we're going in guaranteeing 13 in points and 13 in winter circle. Um, you know, and, and see how that all plays out. Last year we had so many guys sign up that Brian was good enough to bump me to 15. Um, you know, we're going to see how that plays out. You know, we don't know the, the landscape of everything till we get through speed weeks. And it's crazy to think speed weeks and really sunshine nationals, uh, right after the holidays. But Steve, hopefully you have some good fun things planned here for the off season. Uh, take that time. I know you, your phone rings off the hook. There's no off season for Steve Francis and, you know, wheeling and dealing and getting everything uh, good to go. But again, thank you so much for breaking this down with us. And Hey, I mean, we'll, we'll see you at Volusia in just under two months. Yeah, looking forward to being there. Uh, hopefully we've got everything uh, everything good to go. You know, we're working on uh, contingency stuff and, and everything else for our drivers, trying to get everything we can for our race teams and our drivers and, and, and our business. You know, we're trying to make it as most successful as we can. That's Steve Francis, of course, the director for the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Models. And that, friends, is our 2024 schedule here for the Late Models. It's going to be exciting. Again, less than two months till we go racing at Volusia Speedway Park, kicking off the season at Sunshine Nationals. Of course, Dirt Vision has you covered each and every race with the Outlaws for the 2024 season.